It's Wednesday night, and you know what that means. That's it's time point. to play Cowboys and Indians today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, play Cowboys. Who's being a cowboy and who's being an Indian? <laughs> I don't know. It's time for time. I got the dog, baby. <laughs> Hit the intro. <laughs> didn't hear before you're gonna hear it now it's time for this week's edition of dynamite after dark i am of course the king of prediction wrestling i got this whole weekend lot for my hell in the cell match i am the jfb and i'm of course the patron saint of professional wrestling i am that ginger up Bubbly son of a bitch. I'm kind of and dry. And of course, I'd like to give a shout out to that, 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 uh, that, 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 that bad take bitch. Bad take Kate. <laughs> I tell you, dude. Yeah, I'm not a foot in this hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> we are joined by a camaraderie, a brotherhood, if you will. Not a triad, but a square. We're talking about the man right there in that corner. This guy right here. Hailing from Minneapolis, Indiana, or thereabouts. We're talking about Lord Ryan Rich. What's going on, my brother? How you doing? Gentlemen, gentlemen. Hello, and how are we this evening? What, what, what street do you live on? <laughs> Um, I no longer live in Indianapolis, so uh, I used to live on Meadows Edge. Hailing all the way from Meadows Edge! Is it a street or an avenue? Uh, it's a drive. Oh. <laughs> you want his exact number uh, where he actually lives. You're going to have to pay extra. Uh, you'll have to try to hit me up on my OnlyFans for that. Yeah. Yes. It's going to cost you about ten ninety nine a month. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> That's way too low. Oh. Yeah, twelve ninety nine at least, my guy. <laughs> well, he's only got one subscriber, so he's going to need to charge him. <laughs> yeah, I'm rolling in the cash, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't reveal this person's name out of respect for their fandom. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, that's part of the license agreement. With it's me. Company. It's okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Teddy Bear, for the money. Speaking of that, the man below me butts the evil and evil vice president. He's got some of the sexiest hair in all of podcast history. Nothing gets close. Nothing gets you, close. Can you give a Zoolander face for us, EVP Joe? <laughs> I'm not sure I know what the Zoolander face is. I anymore. guess. Oh. There you go. Oh, yeah. Watch out, Milan. Someone's coming down the runway. <laughs> and I go to Milan, they just laugh me out of the place. They'd be like, just go. They say hello. Oh, hey, how are you doing this week, man? You are looking so sexy oh, tonight. I am doing outstanding. First. Well, second night of wrestling I've watched this week in a very long week of wrestling. Yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it's a long week. I'm telling you. It's, it, it, there, and it fits in with our opening bout. Well, not really. Oh, I just want to bring this up really quickly. Yeah. Uh, 
we we uh, uh, were predicting AFW madness. Yeah. In, uh-huh. in our prediction league, and we it, we kicked it off with a bang tonight. Oh, we did. We did. So, so uh, without further ado, the opening match. The uh, yeah. So it's not really a match. It's a segment. Mm-hmm. It's a TED Talk is what it is. Let's yeah, be a TED Talk is what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, this is what I want to say. Yeah. I want to I want to talk a little bit about this. Uh, uh, Adam Adam uh, Copeland's uh, promo here. And then Ooh. I want to talk a bit about CM Punk. Okay. And then we'll, we'll get on to our regular. Do you regular mean moment. he who must not be named? No, he doesn't. He doesn't have that much power. <laughs> um, I, Look, a wart on Voldemort's ear is a lot more scarier. <laughs> so Copeland comes out. And I asked myself, why is the champ not to have the belt? I said the same thing. Yep. I thought it was under his shirt. Like, Well, here's the thing. So apparently in order to be himself, he, he can't have the belt. He, you know, I, In order for me to be Adam Copeland, the man, I can't have the belt with me. He talks about how great it is to be a fan of professional wrestling right now. He mentions WWF by name, the NWA. He talks about Stampede Wrestling. He talks about the territories in Canada wrestling. He talked about British Columbia. He talked about BC. Yeah. Yeah. He he mentions a list of everybody that's in AEW. He talks about how this roster in comparison to other rosters were better. Talks about Osprey and every name he says is a first time match against. He mentions Malachi Black West. Um, he talks about how AEW has made everyone in wrestling step up their game. And then he and then he says, you know, I want to bring out someone, and he brings out Osprey. So let's let's get into the whole rigmarole if you will with the adam copeland ted talk uh and let's go let's let's, let's, let's go canada dry first canada dry lay it on me brother i absolutely adored this yeah because he he pretty much uh wanted to they they started to boo the ww when he said wwf and he shut them down he said no no let's not do that yeah because it because tribalism is stupid yeah we're here for all of wrestling. And when have you ever heard that from any company ever? Yeah. Never. Never. You've never heard we love all wrestling. Yeah. Never heard that from any wrestler ever. Yep. And I loved it so much for that. Like, to me, this is one of the most refreshing promos I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. Like, I give it a 10. Okay. Not holding back. Wow. Okay. Let's go to better your boyfriend and Lord Ron Rich. Uh, yeah, it was certainly a spirited promo. And I, um, you know, at first I was like, is this something that cope wanted to do was it's i mean he said that he had he asked for the time so yeah. um I, I wondered if maybe tk was like hey maybe if you mention these things it wouldn't be mad <laughs> um but i think i think he just came out there because he honestly wanted to say how he felt and provide his perspective yeah amongst everything that you know came out with cm punk on helwani this week and um so i, I i'm glad that Copeland feels that way. I'm glad that through his eyes, the locker room was very strong, very positive. Um, it didn't hit me quite as hard as Canada dry did because I didn't know that no wrestler had ever said that. Um, Cause like I stopped in like 2001, 2002. So I had like almost 20 years where I didn't see anything. I was like, well, on a land where kayfabe is dead, I figured that probably been done before. Yeah. So um, it didn't hit me as hard for that, but look, Looking back on it, I'm that wow, that is that's a that's kind of a big deal. Um, I thought it was a big deal just to mention WWF by name. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if he did that because it was WWF and not WWE. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, it was it was a fantastic way to start out the show. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go to Joe really quick. So I called this a TED talk because it's basically what it was. Like it was to me, he was speaking for the silent minority, the silent majority of wrestling fans, mm-hmm. because there is this obnoxious, like what we call it in the Marines, ten yeah. percent of any group who are the worst of the worst who make who make everyone else just look stupid just for being around. Yeah. And that's WWE and AEW. Yeah. Both of these groups have their dumb fans. Like I literally like as soon as that as soon as AEW posted that that speech from Adam on Facebook, I went into the comments and the very first comment was Sorry, Adam, but you'll never be as good as WWE. And we, I was like, dude, he said enjoy wrestling. He wasn't comparing anything. Like, he was talking to you. Like, you're the idiot he's talking about. Like, uh, 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 like, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I'm not familiar with what happened with CM Punk. I'm, I'm a little behind on the news. What, what happened with CM Punk on, 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 uh, on the MMA hour? So, um. Joe, do you want to do you explain? <laughs> oh, let's see. What didn't he say on this? Uh, he basic like to me, he shit on everything that AEW stands for, like all of its fans. Like he was sitting there saying dumb things like if you're more worried about a five star rating for Meltzer than wrestling in front of more than a quarter fill building, then we're not on the, we're not thinking the same and we're indifferent. Like he literally he took every talking point that you could find on it on the internet that people complain about AEW and he yeah. mimicked it like he was a freaking god. Like my I said this in our group chat. CM Punk was accepted in AEW as a god. Yeah. And he just shit on everybody. Yeah. yeah. Like I used to not have a problem with Punk, but he needs he needs to just shut up and go away. Yeah. Like you can't stay healthy for more than a month. Who cares? You're irrelevant at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, uh, and then on top Ariel, of that, I can't say yeah. what I think about Ariel Hawani because <laughs> it may get this channel demonetized. Well, as long as you don't swear, uh, go right ahead, buddy. Oh, he's, he's, I guess a reporter lightly. He's horrible. Like yeah. he is nothing but a shit stirrer. And can, can you explain everything. what he said at the end of his his? Uh, I didn't watch what he said because I'm not giving okay, him. Okay, so what he said at the end was, "Oh my goodness, my life flashed before my eyes. I was my my life was threatened." Like he was mocking Tony Khan at the end. Yeah, which is which is totally mm-hmm. totally unprofessional. Yeah, dude. And like, on top it, of that, it's, Punk- it's a it's a grade schooler comment. And on top of that, Punk basically admitted to starting everything with Jungle Boy saying, I didn't punch him, I just choked him out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. sure, that's not the same. And like, yeah, much he was Punk, talking Punk about is- the thing that he walked out, he said he quit, and he ran a clown show, and he goes, He didn't get, he got fired. He got fired You're with cause on national television. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, yeah, it was just. I was, and a lot of people were screaming about the NDA that they obviously signed and yeah. what kind of ramifications. I don't think that Punk would say anything to endanger that because I think that... Um, He's a pretty smart guy. Well, I think that whoever owns it now, whatever they're called, WWE, I don't know what their name is, um, their lawyers would meticulously tell him what he can and cannot say. Yeah. On something like that, like they're they'll, awesome. they'll be like, according to what this NDA says, you can say this, but you can't say this, or you can say it in this way, but you can't say it in that way. Like it's all in the terms of the legalese. So I, I'm I'm wondering if if he did break the NDA, if he did, then that's going to be some ramifications. Well, I guarantee he, he broke it. To me, what what this really means for me, like, unless it expires. I think- I think uh, any shred of respect I had left for CM Punk after this, it's gone. Like I have no respect for CM Punk at all. Like, um, you know, after All Out, All In, I, 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 I still had a, a, a Smeagol 
of respect for him. Yeah. And now nothing. Like I I love them. I mean, in all honesty, to be truthful, he's not any better than anybody in any of these whiny little bitch crybabies in the internet wrestling community. I mean, he's not any better. You know, he, he's he's on the same mentality. You know, it's funny because like he said, like, oh, TK, he needed to be a boss and not a friend. The yeah. irony is if TK was a boss. Punk would have been fired a long time. Like I would have fired him right after Brawl in. I mean Brawl yeah. out when yeah. he yeah. demolished the whole company and everyone that was sitting there. I would have fired him on the spot. That's yeah. just me though. Yeah. No, I mean. Well, you would have to fire the young bucks too, and, and no, no, no. Him. I'm talking about before even. I'm mean, even before that. I'm talking yeah. about what he did at the, at the press conference. Yeah, how yeah. he was talking about it. I've been like, yo, no, we don't need this. Goodbye. Oh, okay, yeah. Before the even the skirmish, slap the muffin out of his hand. Yeah, get out I mean, of here. My muffin now. <laughs> I mean, he's just. I mean, I I always liked Sam Punk because he told you like it was. Uh. I don't like CM Punk because he tells you how it is in his perspective. Like he's got a very limited amount of sight as to what's going on. Okay, so I have to I have to tell everyone something. As the number one Bret Hart fan on the face of God <laughs> Screen Earth, yeah. CM Punk, your fan card has been remote. Oh, you are no longer. Damn. A member of the Bret Hart fan club. Oh, At least a card carrying member of the Yeah, he's not a card carrying member. Damn. Well, CM Punk, it was nice knowing you at the meetings. Yeah. Unfortunately, you are not getting any free donuts or coffee, my friend. And and you know what? Colt Cabana is invited oh. to the next meeting. There you go. <laughs> and Ace Steel, you're you're out of here too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even know why. We're just we're just including you. Yeah, guilty by association. Exactly, guilt by association. You know CM Punk, you're friends with him. Well, tough shit. Now you're out. <laughs> See, you even, even your computer agrees. Gave you the thumbs up. <laughs> so let's get to our first match. As Osprey is introduced by the Cope, we get Osprey versus Hobbs. Here's some of my notes. This is going to be a banger of a match. We got Power versus Ariel. Um, Osprey bounced off of Hobbs in that very first second of the match, like you were throwing a tennis ball against a concrete wall. Like <laughs> he just bounced right off of him. It was brilliant. Um, love the slam on the side steps by Hobbs. I mean, for the most part, Hobbs kicked Osprey's ass. I mean, he wore him out from post to post, rope to rope. Um, uh, uh, I mean, he finally Osprey kicks it into a gear. We get a really great win by Osprey. Will Hobbs is not happy with it. Powerhouse, Powerhouse Hobbs is not happy with it. Don Callis gets in between both of them. Hold and, on, I have, I have someone someone tweeted this. Yeah, the promo by Adam Copeland is equivalent to when Vince McMahon came out on SmackDown to address the crowd after his allegations. That's a crap take. Oh, that's such a bad take. Is that bad take? Is that is that no, bad that's, take? No, that's not bad take? Kate. No, he's not that oh, bad. Okay. Thank so God. that's worst take, whoever that is, apparently. <laughs> uh, they're called the PW Hustle. If you want to yeah. block them on uh, Twitter. Yep. Well, now there's another. He should good. hustle and delete his Twitter, is what he should do. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what? PW Hustle. Yeah, you just made the list. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh, boy. <laughs> so uh, we're, having, we're having fun tonight. Yeah. How many people are getting added to the list tonight? My God, that list is long and distinguished, just like my Johnson. Anyways, oh, hey, 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 your first thoughts on the first after minute. dark. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask my mom and dad what that's about later. <laughs> He's talking about your hang down, son. <laughs> well, who are we talking about? You. First oh, night. you're asking me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Will Osprey and uh, and uh, uh, Will Hobbs. This was a really good match. Um, what can you say? Like, 
you got Osprey with the power. You got, I'm mean, sorry, you got Hobbs with the power. You got Will Osprey with the with all the wrestling technique. Um, I really like the, the the ending of this, where Will Hobbs wanted to fight him. It's leading to something. So uh, we'll we'll find out where it's going. But yeah, this was a, this was a really great match. Yeah, there's a crack in the mirror of the Callis family. We're seeing it. It's a small little crack right now, but eventually it will explode. Yes, one of these things is not like the other in the Callis yeah. family. Yeah. And speaking of explode, man, right there. It's about to explode with some knowledge. Thoughts on the first match, Lord Ryan Rich. Come on. Hey, it's little man. Good night, man. Good night, son. I love you. I like I like Tiffany's that uh, take here. Well, mm-hmm. Bill versus Will was tough to watch because how dry Hobbs is to watch. Yeah. Hmm. He, he's not entertaining. He's That's not- an interesting take. Um, as far as my thoughts, I uh, it was interesting to see Osprey kind of get manhandled like that. We've never seen him really in that position before. Like even in his fights with like Omega and, and Orange Cassidy, he took damage, but it wasn't like so one sided, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that was something different to see him like really truly come back. Um, the stuff at the end, uh, just foreshadowing what we've all been seeing coming. Yeah. So I, I just wonder when they're going to pull the trigger and what exactly will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. I think it's going to be what happens at Dynasty. I think, in all honesty, what's going to happen is Osprey is going to look like he's losing. The Callus family is going to come out. They're going to cost him some way, somehow. They're either going to cost him or he's going to get the cheap win and he's going to get pissed. And that's what's going to lead to. I I think it's going to be uh, Osprey gets the win. Yeah. But then the family comes in to jump on Brian. Yeah. And he doesn't like it. Huh? That I mean, either. He, I mean, that's just as good. Yeah. That's just as. I good. can't see Will Osprey losing this. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it either. But you know, be making like a no contest or whatever. I mean, but that's the problem is that if you it, in any way, shape, or form, if you put him into a row with the Don Callis family, with the exception of of Takeshita, who else are you gonna? I mean, what's a worthy opponent? It's not Will Hobbs. It's not whoever else is in that damn family. It, it's the closest one is Takeshita. Te- 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 yeah, but you can't have like a ten match series with Takeshita. No. I mean, at some point you got to get him out of that rut and put him on. You know, get him off the freeway. And Unless him- they have someone else they're thinking of bringing into the family. I was gonna say he's ran through everyone already. Yeah, Hobbs yeah. was the last one. Yeah, yeah. Unless they have a new uh, a new signee. Yeah, very possible. Very possible. Mark, oh! Mark Davis comes back maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I really enjoyed this match. Like, I don't I didn't other than the fact that I don't think Hobbs should have gotten as much offense as he did. Yeah. In this match, especially considering the following match that happens. Yeah. But at the end, man, I'll tell you what. Like when Will did his uh aerial body press or spiral tap, whatever you want to call it, like he landed right on Hobbs's face. No. <laughs> I mean, and then he got up. I was like. That just looked like it hurt. Yeah. And the power slam, the power slam that Hobbs did off the top rope. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> looked like about crunched Osprey. Yeah. But yeah, but um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. I just don't think Osprey should have gotten beat down as for we're building up to Osprey and Danielson. I don't yeah. think it's wise to have like Osprey just. Look like he did tonight, personally. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, yeah, I mean, it kind of helps Hobbs. It, it made Hobbs look better. It made Hobbs look like this monster that he we know he is, and that Tony Khan's not letting happen. He's not letting him be a destructive monster, you know. Because I mean, he does it better than Wardlow. Like he should be in Wardlow's position. Well, not the other way not around. anymore. <laughs> yeah, ready to leave leave AEW and go to WWE? Yeah. 
Yeah. I think they started booking Hobbs that way with with his with his Jericho beatdown, and then it just yeah. kind of. Well, anyways, Osprey is walking up the ramp. <laughs> Out comes Brian Danielson. He comes down the ramp. We go into our second match, which seems very familiar. It's almost like, did we just see this match a second ago? It's Brian Danielson. It's Lance Archer, the Murder Hawk. It's on my notes. Uh, another Ying Yang match. This time it's technical versus just brute strength. Uh, Danielson got beat down this pretty much this entire match. Like there was there was some really good precise key offense on Danielson's side. But not nearly enough as mailman's here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who's here, but milkman. It's kind of late, but you know, <laughs> uh, man, so Amazon is heading. Hey guys, guys. Oh yeah. yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> those puppies are gonna puppy. Oh my god, I can't. I gotta stop. I, I mean, that's what it's like living with two dogs that are good. Yeah. So, anyways, um, so getting back, so Taz is good with numbers. We learned that we learned that early on. Taz, excellent with numbers. The guy's a mathematician. Uh, Danielson working the knee was perfect. I loved it. Um, picture, picture was not kind of Danielson at all. He kept getting his butt kicked. Um, Danielson gets to win. Let's go, Canada Dry first. Again, this was a hell of a match. You get Danielson uh, coming from behind to face uh, um, the Murder Hawk monster, yeah. and uh, he he took some he took some bumps. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, uh, he came out with victorious. Yeah. Uh, hell of a hell of a match. I enjoyed this one. A good a good second match to start the show. Uh, back to back bookend starts. So hell, that's really yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. So this guy down here, Lord Ryan Rich, your thoughts on the second match? Yeah. Um, the thing I see, I, I like when they do this, when they pair people who are going to face soon against a similar opponent. I like that they both went up against big brawlers because that means they both take the same amount of punishment. They're in the same shape coming in. They're both down. So no one has a clear advantage. And I think it make it's gonna make their match better. Yeah. Because you're you're getting that struggle early on. You're gonna follow them through and you're gonna be like, I don't know which one's gonna win. Because yeah. Will's got his ribs over here. Well, you know, us I mean uh Danielson's over here, he's got his whatever. So I think I, I like that kind of stuff because I think it it evens the playing field when you have similar but not the same styles. Um, so for that aspect, I really enjoyed it. Uh, as far as the, the action goes, yeah, but Danielson got beat up quite a bit. Um, yeah. but he, Danielson is smart and he works on the knee and he keeps going at it. And like to get him in, uh, to the, um, to his finisher, it, it was interesting how he got him there from up high. I was like, what's he doing? And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, he's in the LaBelle lock. Whoa, how'd that happen? <laughs> so it, it was a, it was an entertaining match to watch. Yeah. Mr. Joe, match number two, my friend. Okay, before I get to the match, I want to go back to Danielson coming down the ramp. Like, I love the little, like, banter between them because mm -hmm. basically Will said, go follow up what I just did. Yeah, and he did. <laughs> like it was another better match. Like, yeah, these two matches. Like, it. it I hate to be the. I I always say this. Like, don't want to have to follow Danielson. A match is just not fair. Yeah, and especially tonight with someone like Archer, who in his own right is a fantastic big man who doesn't get to show what he can do in AEW nearly enough. Yeah. So well, if you look at his matches, they're all pretty quality. He's just not he's, he's just not, not, like, he's not showcase. I think and I think part of that is because he goes to New Japan a lot. So yeah. it's kind of hard to get invest like get him in real legit stories when he has to go over to Japan, especially for all these tournaments that they that take three months at a pop. He said it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality of matches he has when he has them in AEW. And he and he never has bad matches ever. 
Well, the thing is, to me, in that regard, I feel like they just never knew what to do with him. Like, they tried to do lots of things with him. Like, they've changed it up from him being the heel to baby face to heel and, like, bad heel. And then, like, he's done a lot. And then, with like, they gave him Jake the Snake. Like, especially earlier on, he was getting tons of opportunities. Like, he was he beat John Moxley on Dynamite for the IWGP um US uh, title. United States title. Yep. Like, that was the best work he did in, he's done in AEW in a Texas death match on yep. uh, at all that. Like I mean, but he had numerous shots at like the TNT title. I think he even got a world title shot at one point against a- Hangman Adam Page yep. in a Texas yep. death match or I don't know. I, I, but I think I really is. wish that they would have pulled the trigger on when Brian Cage and him were going at it on on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that would have been cool, like a cool match to see. Yeah. Like a- yeah. So, so we we were having this conversation earlier, and I said that Archer is a very much an underrated big man, and I think it may have been Cade who said, "Well, uh, Brian Cage and Will Hobbs are better." I think after tonight we can say that Hobbs is not better than Archer. I'm no. sorry. Not no. Well, Hobbs Hobbs is very uh, much in need of that. Uh, rub from from different wrestlers, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we go to Renee, who's not in the back; she's on the ramp. Out comes Jericho, uh, which now, for some, for uh, who knows the reason why, but now he's referring to himself as the line art. He says, "Throw up the hook signal," and they do. They hook's got a bat signal, and I want one. Brian <laughs> Hook is formed. They have a match next Saturday. Shane Taylor promotions. Shane Taylor and and Lee Morality say, "Yeah, we'll go ahead and do it." And uh, so those were the two segments that we had. I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna be blunt. This Jericho Hook thing is the stupidest thing in professional wrestling right now. It is ridiculous. You have a guy who can't cut a promo if his life depended on it. The guy couldn't hit water if he fell off the side of a boat. And you're giving him to a guy who's on the twilight of his career and should be having banger after banger after banger matches. Instead, he's got to put up with this bullshit malarkey. Can to dry, you go first. <laughs> malarkey, you say. Um, you well, know it's serious language. when the Bostonian says malarkey. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really get this hook guy. No, like he's green as goose shit, as you would say. Yep. Um, he's, he's got like, I guess, I don't know if he's even got five moves of doom, um, <laughs> three at best. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't get the push on hook. Like, does he have that many fans? I, I don't know. His merch sales say yes. Um, so I, I don't know. Like he doesn't have, he doesn't promo. He doesn't wrestle. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't, make this make sense, Rich. Yeah, uh, good because I'm coming with a positive spin on it. Um, I believe this is probably 100% Jericho's idea. I think oh, he wants. Sure to, I, I, I no, I think he wants to help Hook get there. Like. With his on-screen presence, with everything else, and uh, they, they I they need to try harder, though. Well, okay, but he's saying like sentences now, and before he was like nodding while eating a bag of chips. So, like, let's give the kid a little bit of credit. And I mean, I'm not saying that he's Sting or anything, but this Sting didn't talk for like 18 months or whatever, and then well, we all loved him. I like I like the cat on the back of your chair. Yeah, Molly. She that's where she likes to sit. My chair is all beat up. Wait, you got a Molly too? Yeah, that's Molly. Yeah, Molly's my neighbor. Mm-hmm. That's my Molly kitty. Oh god, she's our second. My anyways, problem is on top problem. of the, on top of that, you want to know why they're pushing Hook so hard? Because he sells merch. Like if you let, let me sales, let me Google this. If yeah, you look at like la- like when he was with um when he was with like every time that he put out a new shirt with a new team, 
whether it was like with Orange Cassidy or whether it was with whoever. Dan Housen, who also moved yeah, merch. Yeah, a uh, Hookhausen. Like those shirts sold off the friggin' shelves, bro. So like he's he's and he's young. So it's someone that younger fans will like to see because he looks and like them. He's not, and Chris Jericho is the farthest thing from that. So it's the classic odd couple. You put that together. And I think that that's the plan going forward is to try to get Hook even more over. And something also I'd like to mention, did anyone else see that he came out of the heel tunnel? Yeah. Jericho? Yeah. So that's obviously building to something. And he seems awful smiley. All right, so my 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 counter argument to your argument, good sir, is this: he doesn't need Jericho. He has his father. His father was better on the mic than Jericho at times. Okay, the guy is a amazing technical wrestler. If he can't, if his own father can't teach him how to do this, what hope does he have? That Jericho's going to all of a sudden just lodge something loose in his brain and it's going to kick in? Ah, get out of this, here. This, this has to be a Jericho betrayal coming yeah. out of And the thing is, like, you well, can't – I get merch. I understand that. But is, the, is he that popular? The, when, I, when I looked it up on Google, I see 2021 on the, those things. Is he still that popular for merch? Uh, I, I don't know if he's still that popular or not, but, I mean – like he, he did really well when he first started doing it. Huh? He when he first came and started wrestling, his his merch was really good. But I don't well, know. I mean, I don't I don't know. I feel like uh, Hookhausen was after 2021, but I, I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. I thought it was 2022 at least, but who knows? Time flies when you're having fun. But yeah. nonetheless, the dude was selling a, a bunch of stuff, and maybe they're trying to get back to that again. I mean, they gave the man his own spotlight. Yeah, but here's the thing. I, I get the merch. And I get you don't, the merch. I, but you don't just do that if you're not gonna push someone. Yeah, but why? Why push him? It doesn't make sense. He's he looks not a like Generation Z with uh-huh. the shaggy hair. Yeah, coming out to the cool rap music, and he has pedigree because Taz is his father. Yeah. Am I being like the old guy who sits on the front porch and yells at kids to get off his lawn? You might be. I don't know. I don't know. Let's get with Joe's opinion on this. I blame Sammy Guevara and all this. <laughs> if he wouldn't have got suspended, this wouldn't be happening right now. <laughs> Sammy Guevara, it's yeah. your fault. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I really don't know what the end game in this is because I once again, I don't know why Jericho likes to do all of his stories in reverse. We've already had the singles match. He's already lost the hook. That should be the end game, not the start. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I agree. Anyways. Okay, so I got the the last big merchandise sellers for, in October. This is the last mm-hmm. time I could find them. MJF, Adam Cole, Orange Cassidy, just an AEW shirt, Bull Cup Gold, Adam Copeland, The Acclaim, MJF, Tony Storm, Jay Cargill, Prince Nana, there's no hook. And there's well, no Nana sold more than hook. <laughs> yeah. It's because of that dance, man. That dance is so yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. You can't fight the dance. No, you can't. You can be the lord of the dance, but you cannot fight the dance. You can be the lord of it, but you cannot yes. fight it. By the way, very, very few things freak me out. I, I, the whole Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dance, the Irish dancing, freaked me out. Now, it could have been because I was on mushrooms at the time. Probably. But uh, I was I was like shivering. I was so freaked out by these people. This like, was you know, way back in the, in the 60s, right? Huh? This was way back in the 60s, right? Yeah, way back in the 60s. <laughs> way back in 1932, Skadoo, my friend. <laughs> Thirty-two. Let's go to match number three. Let's go to Jay White and Daddy Ass. Here's some of my notes. Uh, Daddy Ass didn't wait. He went right after Jay White. Um, great physical match. Um, White is getting beaten like a redheaded stepchild. Okay, not just a little bit. 
pretty much the whole entire match was a showcase of a guy who's over 55 and has a horrible case of asthma. And then they highlighted him, which I thought how they did it was brilliant. It wasn't, there weren't, there weren't moves that were strung together to create something. You mm-hmm. go off a couple moves. Jay White will roll out or go here or go there. He can catch his breath because that's the reason why daddy ass is better in tag team. He doesn't have to wrestle as much as he had to in singles because mm-hmm. he's got really bad asthma. So, which I didn't know until I listened to him on a podcast. Hmm. Um, I like that. The t- you know, uh, uh, I don't agree with the end. I, I understand the end, but a DQ, like it just felt flat. I I didn't it didn't I wasn't like oh wow we're gonna get to see. I mean this was this was kind of the it's a weak way to get to the eventual dynasty match, which is a six man tag match, yeah. which may or may not unify the belts. I don't know. I think it will, but I hope so. <laughs> it was a weak way to do this you made jay white look like a clown pretty much the entire match and this is a guy you paid a lot of money for to get him away from new japan permanently so timothy trim says he looks like he smells like sweaty socks hook I mean, I I feel like hook would smell like stripper perfume Ah! (laughs) I mean, that's just me. I may be wrong. We know he likes strip clubs because every time there's a picture of him, it's of him and one of them. So, uh, yeah. So, I, I just thought it was weak. Let's go with Lord Ryan Rich first. What are we talking about again? Third match. Uh, JY and Daddy Ass. Uh, yeah. Uh, I liked the match. It was fun to see uh, Daddy Ass, you know, whoop some butt. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. But you did notice, like, there was more breaks and pauses, like him, you know, going to the crowd or doing what else, you know. So, you know, they, they, they worked. They, uh, Jay White helped him out, you know. Uh, yeah. Would roll out of the ring, as you mentioned, uh, JFP. Um, it, the match itself, I, I didn't have a problem with. But the ending was definitely yeah. so dumb. I did not like it at all. Um, and that's that. Okay. Moving on to EVP Joe. Okay. Positives. I love the framing of Daddy S just stepping up behind Jay White at the entrance. Mm-hmm. That's it. That Negative. Cool I hated this. Yeah. <laughs> I I did not like it. I don't. This does absolutely nothing for Bullet Club Gold. Does not. Jay White looked like a chump, and yeah. that's not how you should be using this guy. No. Like this. Yep. Like I don't usually criticize Tony Khan and his booking decisions. This sucked. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't yeah. like it. I I get the story that oh he broke into his house so he needs to get his comeuppance, but. I just don't think having a 55 year old daddy ass beating up on a prime Jay White, yeah, is the answer. Yeah, get a different perspective. Let's go to Canada and talk to Canada Dry. Uh, we're live here in Canada. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that uh, it, it's, uh, I, I have to agree with you guys, uh, Jay White. He he needs to be treated like a star, and and, and losing to a fifty five year old uh, Billy Gunn, yeah, is, is, it's not a good idea. Like you could have had him steal the win, yeah, and still I would have rather that than a DQ win, yeah, yeah for for Daddy S, yeah, yeah, but like yeah, I think I think Jay White should have definitely got over. Um, you could have had him beat down, but they cheated to win or something like that. That's all you need. You, you, like, they needed they should, to get with the W. They should have had Jay White win tonight, and then like next week you have the acclaim beat 
the ass boys. So it's basically the groups one and one. And yeah. then you can go to Dynasty and have the big six man tag match. Yeah. yeah. You have to pay off. Which, which I think they're doing this because we know that the Bullet Cup Gold are going to get the belts. They better get the belts. Why? But why would you not? Because Jay White is Jay White. And then, you know, the Guns are former tag team champs on, uh, on their own, you know? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe Billy's going to hang it up. He already uh, did once, remember? I don't know. Maybe he's going to do it again. Yeah, this time it might. Real. Take Tom Real. Brady does. <laughs> so we get to uh, we get to a uh, shot earlier in the day. The young bucks coming out of the car. I'm sorry, the Jacksons, Nicholas and Matthew. And then we get Sue's van, and it's Sue. And these three other clowns I never heard of, but Sue is in the building. It's Sue, which I think is good for Shivani because he can't say it's Sting. No, I know, right? It's I was Sue. Like, it the same way. You He's got to get that pent up energy out. <laughs> yeah. We go to Renee. She's on the ramp with Willow. Um, Willow is mother fluffing awesome. Yeah. I love Willow. I, I've loved her since I first saw her on AEW. She is, uh, she's just got this great, beautiful, positive energy. Um, I like the fact that she shouted out the White Eagle for for those who are not from Massachusetts. Even though I was raised in Boston, which is Eastern Massachusetts, and where they're wrestling at AEW tonight is on the western part, and it's a good five, six hour drive. Like, it's not close. Mm-hmm. They shout out the White Eagle. It's just <laughs> Polish Bob. <laughs> you watching the game? <laughs> yeah, but I was trying to put the game on in the background, and the sound came up. <laughs> Fail. We boring you, Canada Dry. <laughs> I just, I got right, we're not good enough for you, Canada Dry. <laughs> the shout out to White Eagle. The White Eagle is this amazing Polish pub in downtown Worcester. It's Worcester, okay? Not Worcester. Yeah, it's not Worcester. Worcester. It's okay. Worcester. Can we can we can we time out here real quick? Yeah. If it's Worcester or however the Worcester. hell you say it, what's up with all those extra letters? To confuse people. Well, it fucking worked, okay? (laughs) We don't like out-of-towners in the state of Massachusetts. New Hampshire, stay in New Hampshire. California, stay in California. And this is how there's two ways we can tell that you're, or three ways you eat you're not from here. Worcester, (laughs) how you eat lobster, and how you drive in a roundabout. (laughs) Okay, so I just want to remind you guys. Uh, that we got our vintage video games at the end of the show. So oh, make yeah. sure you make sure you think of your vintage video game now. I got mine. I got it. Oh, you already have you've had it ready for days. I've had I've had it percolating. I even wrote it in my notes. <laughs> I got a couple cranking around in here. <laughs> the reason I say that because I'm always caught not ready. So I have to start mid show. Um so they she shouts out Wide Eagle, which is this Polish pub. And they have professional wrestling there. And they have live music. And it's really awesome. If you're ever in Worcester, go there. See it. It's a, an amazing building. It's been there since the 1900s. So, I mean, this thing is ancient. Um, and then, obviously, being in Massachusetts, you got you to gotta, you gotta ramshackle out your brand new beautiful diamond ring and show it to the world. Look at this. I call it Mercedes Monet. It's my new ring. She comes out and she declares that whoever wins at Dynasty on April 21st, she's got the first crack. She is the number one contender for whoever wins at Dynasty. And then, so she wants it at double or nothing. She wants it at yep. double or nothing. Yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Kind of dry. What did you, what did you think of this? I like that the, the overall positivity of uh, Willow's promo here. Yeah. Uh, like, it's just getting to the heart of, well, kind of like, it's kind of piggybacking on Adam Copeland sort of thing. Yeah. You guys all stood by me. You made me what I am here in AEW. Like, it's overall very positive. Yeah. And then out of nowhere comes, I believe, where's her sister sauce too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she just comes in and uh, 
just takes over the spotlight. So. Yeah. Let's talk to Lord Ryan Rich. Yeah, I think that um, Willow was doing a great job and she was being passionate and like forthcoming and with her character. Uh, stat, I saw someone say, look like someone from the Matrix. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, yep. Hey, part five just got announced today. Drew Goddard as the director. So that could be interesting. Oh, they need to let that series go. No, <laughs> no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, di- it's in different hands. It's not with the Wachowskis. Yeah. It's going to be Drew Goddard. So it's going to be. So that this, this other one, this one they just did, is not part of the continuum? No, it is. That was done by Lana Wachowski. Okay. But if you understand why she made the movie, then you understand why the movie was the way it was. Yeah. That movie was a love letter to her parents that had died. Yeah. So that, but that's a whole nother podcast. Um, Movies uh, are us right. every Tuesday here. <laughs> I mean, I could definitely we could host a movie podcast. We, we still want to get our, our Dungeons and Dragons game going. Haney wants in on right. this too. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Somebody's got to be the DM. I'm not doing it. That's, <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, Haney seems like he'd be a good uh, dungeon master. Yeah. I mean, he probably would. Yeah. He's very creative. Let's go to the Joe. Joe. Um, so first thing is the whole f- reverse of where they were standing like facing the titan tron was yeah weird. that was weird yeah um and yeah i love willow i've said it since day one like she just has that infectious like positive happy-go-lucky energy that honestly is missing in wrestling nowadays everyone's just so grumpy and cranky and just wants to argue all the time like she's just a brush of fresh air a Breath of fresh air. Yeah. Breath air is great. I love fresh air. <laughs> but here's my one complaint: like you, like they made this big, big to do about the rankings. Yeah. I love Monet, like, but she hasn't had one match. How is she the number one contender for a title? Money, <laughs> money talks. Yeah. You know she what? did say that money, even, money talks in Vegas. You know what I would do? I'd even because like they do this with with Copeland too. Like the 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 Cope Open undermines the rankings. So just you know what? Don't put those two titles on the rankings. Just make it very obvious that you know what? Yeah, they are they are open. Titles. These are open challenge or whatever. The the rankings don't apply to these belts. I mean, yeah. Okada just picked up the Continental I'm Championship and he had like, what, one or two match maybe? Yeah. yeah, that too. I hope that she better have a match before freaking Ben. Oh, yeah, like, she better be ridiculous. wrestling before double or nothing. That's yeah. ridiculous. I don't think she's going to. That's ridiculous. I mean, I mean unless she's not like cleared to wrestle yet, maybe she still has, hasn't has been cleared by AEW doctors to wrestle yet. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. All I know is this. I don't think she's gonna. I don't think we're gonna see her in the ring wrestling until double or nothing. Oh, that's a month and a half away. Yeah, you can string it out. You can. Oh, that's not too bad. I thought it was longer than that. You yeah. know, you know what is really weird though is at the end of this promo, like she walked to the ring. Yeah, yeah they did. Sure. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> like, yeah, Miss Ronaldo. She ain't splitting Adams at Harvard, okay? <laughs> well, that, I think that was just a, a, a production setup that wasn't a good idea. Yeah. Like, I think she wanted to, to show the fans of Worcester cheering for Mercedes because it's in Massachusetts. Oh, man. Yeah. Is chicken the exact dinner. reason why they did it. Wait, we're in there, chicken dinner. Let's go to the fourth match of the night. The fourth. Okay. Sorry, I got Sports Center on in the background. Yeah. And. It's the Rangers and the Devils, and like as soon as they dropped the puck, everyone started fighting. Oh, <laughs> that's the Rangers and the Devils. That's nothing new. I mean, it's New York, New Jersey. No one likes Jersey. Everybody hates New York. So you know. Anyways, the box. Back to Jersey. <laughs> box taking on the best friends. It's Nicholas and Matthew versus Trent Beretta and Orange Cassidy. Or some of my notes. Sue is awesome. Sue came down to the ring like a dutiful, good mother should. 
something that Christian would do if he was your father. He comes to the ring and would, walk side by side with you. I would love to see an interaction between Sue and Christian. That would be hilarious. Did you, did you know that Dr. Pepper is the first, uh, actually, sorry, the second drink ever, soda pop? Really? I believe I heard that before. Yes. Hmm. Hires Root Beer is the original. Oh, I did not know that. And uh, back in like early 2000s, guess who bought Hires Root Beer? Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yes. I mean, like, great just name to end up. Like, we are now number one. <laughs> yes, we finally beat you. <laughs> so uh, the match picks up. Uh, I like the fact that Matt had to get on the headset and produce the segment. And Chaz goes, hey, that's my line. He's like, it basically he just tells him to shut up. Um, so Sue almost ate a super kick. Matt puts his hand out, and damn you, Matt. And this is why you don't super kick Sue. She slaps him across the face. Now, let me just say that was the worst slap I've ever seen in my life. It was horrible. Pretty bad. <laughs> like, there's no power behind it. I'm like, come on, Sue. Yeah, yeah. And you just know she's just a sweet woman. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. That's why she's a sweet woman. She didn't want to have to slap Matthew. Yeah, you like if I'm gonna slap you, I'll slap you like a good boy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, she had cookies waiting for him in the back. Yeah. <laughs> now here's the thing. Sue gave Trent a kiss, and you think that would have jacked him up? Would have made him big and strong? Would have made him victorious? But alas, no. He hit the bare corner. Uh, the turnbuckle with the out the turnbuckle pad. Uh, and it gets rolled up for a small package with the tights being held. One, two, three. The kiss did not help. Best friends lose. Chuck Taylor gets in the ring. It's the Chuck Taylor. It's Brett. It's Trent Beretta. It's Orange Cassidy. It looks like they're going in for the big huge hug. You got to give them what they want. Give them what they want. Except they don't want this. Trent turns. He knocks the living crap out of Orange Cassidy. He's seething, seething. And Chuck Taylor didn't do shit. <laughs> Just sat there like a big bump on a log, you big old toad. <laughs> oh, <DDP> Joe. <laughs> so, first thing we haven't mentioned is I love the Young Bucks entrance. Where Nick and Matthew are like, come on, give us our pyro, keep going. Right. Yeah. I just keep it coming. Keep everything it coming. that they're doing right now, I love because it's just such great character work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The match itself, phenomenal as usual. It's four guys who probably wrestled each other a million times. Yeah. Um, I'm just honestly, I'm glad the turn finally happened because it feels like they've been teasing this Trent turn. For what feels like forever. Oh, we yeah. all love Sue, by the way. No, no, no one is dogging on Sue. You need to go back to that other comment. I think it was by Noob. Not that last one, oh, but the, the one before the that. Scapegoat. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. Ooh. Yeah, that's a Jack Perry shout out. Yeah, yeah but, and you, this goes back to uh, uh, Haney predicting that they're bringing him in to be part of the elite. It. I that thought crossed my mind. Who Trent or Jack? No, Perry? Jack Perry. Jack Perry. Oh, I can see it. And then, what, and but what if Trent does come in then too? Huh? That would be it a little like weird. it becomes like company men. No, personally, I, I think down with that. I think this is gonna. I think this is gonna spin off into a uh, Rapongi versus best friends thing. Yeah, that's what I think we're getting. That could okay. be. That could be um, very well could be. Yeah. I mean, chaos. You know I mean, I, God is there. Yeah. You know what I miss is why do you have to tease a turn? Why can't he just surprise the shit out of us and just turn? Yeah. I just have his thoughts all up here. Don't need to show us all like for weeks and months. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like I like that's the kind of storytelling Tony Khan likes to do. I, I would prefer just to shock the shit out of us. We had no idea this was coming. I mean, Tony's got yeah, it. It works in different ways, like because with Adam Cole and MJF, like you saw them both almost hit each other several times, like over months or whatever. Yeah, Tony then, likes to tease, way but it too wasn't much. a surprise, and everyone knew it was going to happen. Yeah. 
So, but it, it played out well. So I think it just depends on the people you have it with. Yeah, I yeah. I miss the old school days of just it came out of nowhere. Yeah, but but like with that said, like now Canada Dry is the was very man yelling at kids on the lawn. <laughs> this heel turn is very. Well I happened. miss the good old days when Dr Pepper didn't own Hires Root Beer. <laughs> <laughs> Can you draw your thoughts on the fourth match? <laughs> there was a match. Oh yeah. my goodness, I missed it. No, I I think it was a really really good match. Um, you know they told a really good story. I don't even remember when that the, the turnbuckle came off, but uh, Matthew, I think it off. should have been Orange Cassidy to take the loss. Yeah, because. I mean, it would make more sense. You cost us. We could have been champions, you know, like, but he has no one to blame but himself and his mom. Well, maybe he's like, you weren't there to help me out when I needed it. Yeah, supposed to be my best friend. Why didn't you break yeah, up? The, that works too, but it, just, it would have made more sense to have Orange Cassidy eat the loss in this case. Yeah. Well, I didn't think so when I got that point right. I changed it at the last minute. I originally oh, no, I got it right. Don't <laughs> get it wrong. He's like, I, I got, got it right. right, but it's not. I got it right, I but it doesn't make it right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's go to Lord Ryan Rich. Yeah, this match was fun. Um, I was going to mention the the whole uh, scapegoat thing. Um but it's fun and like I love their out I love the Bucks outfits, the entrance with the more pyro. Like when they yeah. first went heel as the elite with when uh, Omega was doing his whole cleaner run, um, they were super douchey then. They're super douchey now, but in a corporate way. Yeah. And so to me, it's just so fascinating that they can play these really douchey characters in really different ways but still convey the same amount of douchiness. And yeah. I love it. Um, I love, sorry, I love their ever-evolving facial hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want Nick to bring back, like, the highlighted just goatee part. Yeah. Like, when he had just the blonde goatee with the rest of it, I was like, we don't deserve this, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just loved it. Like, so this whole stuff is, it was fantastic. Um, as for Trent, I thought that was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen here. They've been like you, they've been teasing it for a while, but certainly interesting. And then even leaving Sue behind at the end, I was yep. like, hmm, okay, so we'll see what happens. Yep, all right. Well, we go to our fifth and final match, the main event. Got Mariah May in one corner, you got Thunder Rosa in the other corner. Here's some of my notes. We didn't deserve Tony Storm on commentary. Amen, we are, brother. We are infidels. Amen. We are, we are scum. We are what scum is eaten by catfish on the bottom of a oh, bottom you know line. I like the best. What was uh, Mariah May looks like a young Tony Storm, <laughs> and uh, a Thunder Rosa looks like an older Thunder Rosa. I love <laughs> that, dude. <laughs> My favorite one was when she apologized to Tony Schiavone about him losing his dog. Yeah. And this is, but now you get to call, but the good news is you get to call a Thunder Rosa match, basically calling her a dog. Right. <laughs> is there any more? Do you guys got any? Uh, no. Joke. Outside of them making fun of Luther for not being able to put the belts on right. I, that was yeah, he's like, like, he's been worthless lately. I don't even know what I'm going to do with him. <laughs> No, I don't have you any do a good. Time. You do a good, Tony Storm. Let me tell you that. Thank you. All right. You, you should be a thespian, <laughs> darling. I already am. So Rosa gets some offense in. Mariah May gets the win. Oh, I'm sorry. Mariah May takes the loss. Thunder Rosa is not the number one contender. She will be facing Tony Storm at Dynasty. I I feel like. This is going to be the worst match of Dynasty. And the only simple reason is that there's no buildup to it. All of a sudden, it was like Thunder Rosa is wrestling on collision. And then, like a week later, they're like, oh, she's the number one contender. 
Wait, wait, how did this happen? She had only three matches this year. We beat her in a tag team match. Oh God, it does. It, it regardless, it, it there's like no time for build up. The April twenty first is right around the corner. Literally right around the corner. How are you going to build this up? And I fear that the problem with the women's division is they're not building up anything long term storytelling for Tony Storm. Like the Bravo one wasn't bad. And it's Hater, still ongoing. Hater's not there. Britt Baker's not there. Soraya's not there. Like you, you know, you have you have a, a huge gut of your women's roster not wrestling injuries or whatever the personal issues or whatever it it seems like tony storm is on an island with this amazing character and no one to play with yeah and it's going to be the who's my opponent of the month as opposed to hey this is a legitimate contender who can take her belt away and she does everything in her power not to be involved with the match. Okay, unless you guys have something to say on this, I think we can move on to uh, the, the, the main event. Or the, sorry, the, the, the contract signing. Yeah. I just, sure. I, I feel like it was very anticlimactic in the way that Mariah may lost. Like she's undefeated. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. felt like it should have been a much bigger thing for her to get her first loss. Yeah. And, and we just, got to, and we got to see how good she is. Because she's not fighting no name talent now. Now she's fighting legitimate people. And, 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 it generally wasn't a good match, I gotta say. It, it was serviceable for what it is. Yeah, that wasn't her fault, I don't horrible. think. I thought she looked good. Yeah. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't a good match. Yeah. And then, I mean, you know, Thunder Rosa, I mean, it's Thunder Rosa. She's not gonna change how she wrestles or who she is as a person. She's always going to be Thunder Rosa. So, you know, but, you know. It... Taco Tuesdays. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> so let's go to the contract signing. Swerve comes out first. Looking all pimp. Nice big fur coat. His, uh, his uh, hangman page chain. And here comes Joe, cocky and confident. Joe gets the mic first. Uh, and he has some advice for this contender. Uh, he's watched his AEW career so far. The truth is that this isn't you climbing the ranks and then taking the belt and becoming the next champ. This is doom and destruction when you step in the ring with Joe. Doom and destruction. Tells him to do the right thing. Think. Before you sign. Swerve gets the mic. He's won this moment his whole life. He's been building a dynasty. You know, they AEW has been building a dynasty with these signings. Um, the belt is bigger than both of them. Uh, Joe. Swerve pushes Joe. Joe retaliates. Swerve gets the chain, puts it around his neck, looked like he's going to try to choke him out. Uh, I'm sorry, but Hangman's neck, about yay thick. Joe's neck, about yay thick. He ain't going to choke Joe out with a chain, mother <laughs> mother fluffers. Not, Not a chance. That. Not a chance in hell. But Joe wraps the chain around his hand and clocks Swerve, knocks him out cold. Oh my God! He does it like five or six times. He hits him oh. seven times, cuts him wide open. And as Joe is walking up the ramp, Swerve grabs the mic and laughs, and he then signs the contract in his own blood. <laughs> Swerve, <laughs> Canada Dry, you go first, my friend. Let's not forget Samoa Joe then comes in and yes. slams him through the table. Yes, you're an Augie. Not but not before Swerve just sits there like this, just ready to take it. Yeah. Looking yeah. like the martyr and that he's that he is. 
Yeah. This this whole segment was was prime time TV. Yeah. It was so good. Um Samoa Joe killing it. Yeah. Swerve killing it. Yep. This is setting up the coronation of yep. Swerve freaking Strickland. Yep. As your world heavyweight champion. So excited. It is. It is. Better than your boyfriend. Yeah, obviously it was a very fun segment. It made me die laughing when the whole crowd started chanting MJF. And yeah. Swerve was just like, mm, and then uh Joe was like, Yeah, I know. <laughs> like it was so <laughs> funny to me. Like they both kind of broke a little bit, like and with the grills and the whatever that uh Swerve has in his smile when he does it like that is just so yeah. funny to me. Like I was just like I want to smile now. This makes me happy. <laughs> um, but all of it was good. Like Joe's a professional. Like he's he's been there. He knows how to do it at the contract signing. He's trying to play the mind games, get inside Swerve's head. Um, Swerve wasn't going to have none of it because this is his dream. And uh, yeah, he tried to choke Joe out and you can't. That boy's neck thick like juggernaut. Like, you can't do that. Like, it's, that's a thick boy. And yep. you just got a little tiny arms. You can't do that. You better get Brian Cage size if you want to choke him out like that. <laughs> um, but it was it was a fun way to uh, to end the show. I agree. I agree. GM Joe. So, every time they, I think... They can't make Swerve look any more badass and any more like a star. Yeah. They pull something out. My, this, like, this just, if you didn't want to see Swerve be champion before this, like, there's no way you can't tell me you don't want to see it now after this. Yeah. Like, this segment did wonders for both. Joe looked like a badass. Like, he's sitting there. The way they framed him getting choked and his eyes just pop and he just pulls the chain off and mm -hmm. turns around. Oh, like that was phenomenal. Like I loved everything about this. And the best part of all this is you see Joe walking up the ramp and Swerve still has that evil side to him because you hear that maniacal laugh. Yeah. You don't see him, you just hear the laugh. Like yeah. he is the final boss. No pun intended. Sorry, Rock. Oh. Don't steal your your shtick. Or but, or swing the deeps. Yeah. Like, but he comes off as final boss material. He came out in that mink coat with that chain with this just deadpan look on his face. Mm -hmm. He looks like a star. He carries himself like a star. Yep. Like, everything is just perfection with Swerve right now. Yep. And just one more thing. When he signed the contract in blood, every, like, early 2000s emo chick had to go change their panties. <laughs> like, he's got the purple eyes, and he's bleeding, and he's signing his mean, blood. He like, pretty much confirmed like that, you. so... Yeah. The, the, the neat thing about this is I've never seen a guy take the majority of the beat down and still come out the bigger star in the situation. I've never seen that before. That was like, brilliant. Like the best line was that's all you got. Okay, good. I'm taking your title from you. <laughs> like, I mean, I've been hesitant. On. I've been hesitant about Swerve winning this early. Uh, and a lot of it, and some of it is, you know, some of it is. I am a Joe fan. I've, I've known Joe. Uh, I've met him multiple times. But I don't like seeing Joe being a latchkey champion, you know, where they just give him the top for a couple of months. And then I think this run hasn't been bad. I think this run has been really by good. By the time Dynasty comes. That's 106, I mean, 120 days. Yeah. But I'm I'm gonna say this. I want Swerve to win. I really want Swerve to win, but I don't want him to if he wins now, he lose I don't want him losing it all out or all yeah, in. Yeah, see, that's the thing that makes me wonder. I'm like, he's not just gonna drop it he, all he out. He doesn't he doesn't need to. You can run with this guy for a long time. Oh, I know, but you're going like to put the strap on Osprey at all out. You don't need the strap on Osprey. Osprey is big on his own. Okay. 
He doesn't need it yet. I mean, well, I know I, that we've had a lot of people that. on this podcast. I'm just saying, look at all the three big signings he just signed: Okada, Monet, yeah. and Osprey. They there's other Okada, titles. Okada there. got a belt. Monet again, about to get a belt, yeah. and Osprey going to get another belt. Yeah, there's other belts to win. Look at the I'm one. I'm not going to do that. Edge has got. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to give him this time. I mean, we've. I mean, there's been people on this podcast who have said it religiously that Osprey is going to win. At all in, you know, and it, I don't think he needs to. I don't think he needs to. I don't think he needs. It's to. like you got you have your stone cold that you're creating right now in Swerve. Yeah, and it's like, well, let's end his run here because the Rock is here. Like, no, yeah, but before cold. Stone Cold got started, he had to get through Bret Hart. He had to get through other people. Like that's where Swerve is. He's Stone Cold of WrestleMania 13. He's not Stone Cold of WrestleMania 17 yet. Yeah. No, he's wrestling Shawn Michaels right now. I'm just saying, bro. Okay. This is his Shawn Michaels moment. Be wary. Be wary. It's what they said before the Ebenezer Scrooge before he woke up. Let's, let's go to the flower shop. Let's go to the flower shop. All right. <laughs> Guys, we're at the end of the show. You know what that means. We do our favorite segments. We do our favorite match. Then we top it off with a little whipped cream called. For now on, we're calling it the flower shop. The flower shop. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, number three, you got to give it a bell rating, one to five. And then number four, favorite video game. Let's go. To Canada Dry first. All right, my favorite match of the night. Uh, it's it's got to be um, Will Osprey and Will Hobbs. Yeah, I I I love watching this Will Osprey wrestle. He's so fun to watch. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna say that that there was a good match. Um, my favorite segment of the night is clearly the last segment of the night. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, my favorite video game uh, of the back back old good old days. Um, it's a game called Skitchen. Okay. I don't know if you played Skitchen, but Skitchen, you're on rollerblades and you had weapons, and you grabbed onto the back of cars and you beat down other people <laughs> with your crowbar and shit. It was okay. a good game. Ooh. But sometimes you uh, you got knocked off yourself and you got ran over. <laughs> I done got ran over. What was your star rating? I got, I got been done run over. I got done run over. <laughs> Can I draw? What did you say your star rating was? Uh, I did. I was talking about Skitchen. Uh, okay. I'm going to give this... 3.96. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, Ryan Rich. Yeah, my favorite segment is the opener with Adam Copeland. Yeah. And my favorite match is Matthew and Nicholas Jackson versus the Best Friends. Um, I thought that the action was comparable to that of the Osprey um, Hobbs, but with Trent turning, I felt like it was more impactful. Um, because we didn't really see it coming at that particular moment. Um, especially with Sue there, you know, you didn't think that it was going to happen with Sue there. Uh, so to me, that's my match of the night. Uh, favorite or oh, favorite video game, we're gonna travel now. I think there's still some more. Can from you say it like you're an old timer as well? <laughs> I can. Back in the old NES times, I had some more, some more maybe that I could do, but. I'm going to mosey on up to uh, Super Nintendo times. And uh, I'm going to pick a game that's one of the hardest games you've ever seen, you hear? And that is Spider-Man's Maximum Carnage. Also available on the Sega Genesis. Yeah. Who cares about that crap product? <laughs> <laughs> Tropalism is not wanted here. <laughs> uh, well, I'm a Nintendo guy, my guy. So there you go. Um, and my <laughs> bell rating, I would say, I was thinking close to what Canada Dry said. Um, I'm going to go with a, a 3.67. Okay. And I just like to say, I liked all your choices there. They were very, very good. Uh, old timer good. 
Yay. Pitchard Farm yeah. remembers. <laughs> Pitchard okay, Farm remembers. Remember. Next week. <laughs> Let's go with the Joe. Okay, so my segment of the night, I'm going with Adam Copeland just because, like, he was my spirit animal tonight. He was saying what I wanted to, everyone to hear. Like, yeah. just shut up and enjoy wrestling. Got it. Favorite match? I'm going with Danielson and Archer. Ooh. I loved it. It was yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. So, vintage game. Back in my day, could sit there for hours. And it was a ri- it was sort of like Tetris, but do you guys remember Doctor Mario? Heck yeah, yeah, bro! I had that, I had that for the. Game I could Boy. play that game. Like I would play on that the Game, game Boy game. or on the console. I would play that game till my eyes were watering <laughs> <laughs> from so much concentration of playing. Hmm. But I'm giving this show a four. Like I loved the opening, the closing. A lot of there was no bad wrestling, really. Yeah. No, was it and it like did it dip in a little, a little got a little sluggish in the middle? You could say so, but the opening promo, the closing promo, the first two matches, like it just I just think it was the daddy ass when that soured it. For yeah, me. that was probably the, the worst. Part Otherwise, I, I was thinking four or above, like outside of that, yeah, but that's a part of it, so it's got to bring it down. All right. I'm lying. Your turn, JFB. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> Back in my day when <laughs> Mel crossed the corner and missing kids were on the carton. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he's prideful that missing kids are on milk cartons. <laughs> <laughs> we drank it. We're like, hey, is this Billy? I remember him. He was on a sleepover last week. <laughs> like, wasn't he on this carton two months ago? No. Uh, my favorite segment, again. <laughs> my favorite segment was the Tompkins <laughs> boy ran away again. <laughs> he told his mom's car he's going up to Mexico. <laughs> Said Were you tired of you have a no carton updated pictures of he's looking older and older. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Favorite segment was Joe and and uh, Swerve. I mean that if that didn't get you ready to buy that pay per view, then you have no pulse, and you may need to be checked by a doctor. You might be clinically dead. Maybe. I mean, I, I mean, Osprey and Danielson sold that for me. I was like, yeah, that's a that's a pay per view. I think I, I, I'll buy on the day of the pay per view. What happened in that segment? I'm buying it tonight. I'm getting on and I'm buying it tonight. Uh, my favorite you match. Know what I got? Yeah. I got three pay per views. Uh, Fight TV let you buy three pay per views for a hundred bucks. That Ooh, is a deal. That's that a happens. Black Friday bundle. Woo! Three, 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 three weeks to be exact. What are the three pay per views? <laughs> um, Dynasty, Double or Nothing, and uh, Forbidden Door. Wow. Nice. wow! The summer series. Okay. And uh, maybe wow. I'll get all out, all in, and uh, full gear. Yeah, it could happen. Or wrestle well, dream. Uh, my favorite match. Oh, yeah, wrestle dream will, will be. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite match was uh, that was Danielson versus Archer. I, 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 as much as I love the first one that they showed, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Caleb, <laughs> no, sorry, man, we can't give you our real addresses. Um, I better I just, bring the snacks and the booze. Yeah, I mean, you come to your house then. <laughs> pizza and hookers, yeah, you can come over. But uh, you know, if you're bringing over some Kool Aid and some pancakes, we'll recreate in your house pay per views. <laughs> <laughs> Literally in your house, exactly. Yes. Uh, so that was my favorite match, favorite video game back in my day when you had to crank in order to <laughs> in order to generate enough electricity to play a video game. I had an Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and then Ooh. that I played a game called Pole Position. Oh, yeah, that's an old one. 
Yeah, that's like I wasn't the graphic shitty compared to what they you they were in the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you, you crash. It's like a big orange blob of uh, ketchup on the screen. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and uh, I'm gonna give it a three point five. I I don't know if you've ever heard of these cookies, but at uh, lots of places that sell cookies, you can get a cookie top, a cookie bottom, and then it's filled with like frosting. Like it's called Oreo cookies, JP. <laughs> yeah, but they take like big, huge cookies, like American. Oh, cookies. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Um, so I made, so Tony Khan made one and, but in the middle was just shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit it was the middle part of the show was just shit. The daddy ass match, the promos before the Jericho. I mean, everything that was smack dab in the middle, just dunk. So is this like, it was like rotten lettuce and rotten tomatoes on your sandwich. Yeah. What he's saying is it was a real turd sandwich. Yeah, exactly. A lot of brown on the middle. Yeah, there you go. Not chocolate either. <laughs> Joe, what's our cumulative score for the week? Uh, our cumulative is 3.7825. I mean, still not bad. Nope. <laughs> Hasn't been what we've been ranking them in the last couple of weeks because they we've been in the fours consistently. But All right, before we shut her down, yeah, I uh, just want to mention that uh, we have on Friday, we have uh, Around the Effing Galaxy – uh, we got the Magic of Wrestling, which is doing. They'll be doing the prediction show for WrestleMania. There's yep. a lot of predictions. Yep. And then uh, uh, we are going to do the Garage After Dark, where we're doing night one review. Yeah. Of WrestleMania, well, and then on uh, the All and Wrestling show on Sunday, we'll be doing a prediction show itself for night two, and then. Uh, We'll be doing uh, a review show after as well, so uh, you'll see a lot of Joe. Um, you might see some uh, some uh, Ryan Rich. So here we go. All right, and I might be drinking. Yeah, you're welcome to come on that uh, review show on night two if you want. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Night one, I, even. I, Never mind. I might be more of a night one guy. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So I'm going to take a Sally to the prom. That's <laughs> all I got to say. Woo! Two Sally Rod. All Let's right. just wrap up the show. Well, you know what? Let's do this. If you want to buy a shirt, we have a really awesome shirt. Yeah. It is, of course, the All and Wrestling Shades of Excellent. It's our honor to Bret Hart. We do it because we love Bret. We have the shirt that Joe's wearing. We have the Canuck shirt that uh, Canada Dry is wearing. I'm wearing a Hey Kids comics because I'm a big, huge freaking Kevin Smith nerd. So, you know, let's see that. Love him. Anyways, on behalf of Canada Dry, on behalf of Better Than Your Boyfriend, Lord Ryan Rich, on behalf of the man with the hair, EVP Joe, I am the JFB. And you know how it goes. It's okay to be down. It's not okay to stay down. Reach out to your friends. Reach out to anyone who's willing to help you. And when they help you, let them pick you up and you help them get up to you, raise your fist in the air, and say it with me. Just keep fighting. Hit it. Ooh. This has been an effing worldwide media production. You can find us on all social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and others. Head over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash effing wrestling. And while you're there, click like and subscribe. Want some swag? Head to our store at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash effing wrestling. You can find all these links and much more at our awesome website, effinwrestling.com. As the JFB always says, you can book it. Hey, JFB.